Okay, welcome to the next episode of Newcastle Muse Talk. I'm your host, Simon Threadgate. Uh, our guest today is Mr. Kevin Bull. Uh, I've worked for Kevin as a reviewer for Reverb Street Press, that he's the editor for. Uh, he's been a long time music photographer. Um, I've known his name from doing Street Press over the years, uh, and seen his work for, for a long time. Um, yeah, really interesting conversation from that photographer's point of view, um, as somebody who's also involved on that a street press level, um, doing that local sort of coverage still you know, in an online capacity and we sort of talk about the viability of street press as a medium and it's sort of different forms that it's taken now. So yeah, it's our first phone interview as well. So everything sounds fine from my end. Um, have a listen, let me know if you have any trouble hearing it. Um, but yeah, hopefully as I've sort of said on social media, trying to get back to a regular schedule now with the episodes, once every Wednesday we'll get a new episode, um, I've got one, as I've said before, I've got one with the Marcus Wright in the can, I just recorded one with, uh, Emma and Ian over at the, the Lasso Gary, so that'll be coming out in the next couple of weeks as well, um, hopefully I can maintain a schedule, I've been ripping up floorboards the last couple of days at home, we had a burst water pipe and, um, yeah, it's been pretty full on, so... Um, yeah, we'll get some more recordings done, got some guests lined up, more stuff coming. Keep a ch- keep your eye on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Newcastle Museo Talk. You can check us out online at uh, newcastlemuseotalk.home.blog. Um, has all our episodes uploaded there as well. Uh, you can check us, check us out on the Apple iTunes app there as well. And in the... Um, the, the um, yeah, either what is it the podcast app yeah <laughs> so check us out um, let us know if you've got any feedback on our episodes uh, but yeah Kevin Bull enjoy Jump into it. We'll do. Um, we'll touch on you sent through a bio, which was pretty cool. I, I didn't know. Him. I, I only met you really through. I've never spoken to you other than this. Is our first time speaking to each other. We've all done emails previously with uh, Reverb, but uh, yep. you're a local boy in terms. Of you grew up in Garden Suburb there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Garden yeah. Suburb until I was about. I remember having my 21st birthday in Garden Suburb, so it would have been 22, 23. I moved to Sydney. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yes. Um, Charlestown, then moved into Garden Suburb and um, was mostly there, yeah. part of high school. Chasing so, uh, work down to Sydney was what you drew you away from, from the local area? Pardon, what was that? Sorry, chasing work was got you, what got, got well, you away? Well, it was work. Like, when I left high school, I did, um, I, I sort of went into the bank. I did uh, a number of years in the Commonwealth Bank. Yep. But while I was doing that, I was doing, like, a computer course um, at the college um, mm-hmm. after hours. Yep. So um, I, I had that interest in computers anyway. And computers was all new back then. Yeah. We're, we're, we're talking 82, 83. Yeah, well, I, was born 80, I was born 83, so. <laughs> so there you go. So, so I had an interest in what they could do and, and, you know, I did about three years of that and then went to Sydney for computer operations. Basically, yeah. that's, that's what I've got my um, foot in yeah, with, cool. with this operations. So, yeah. And um, spent... Yeah, well, a couple of decades, basically, in <laughs> IT. Yeah, yeah. You're at Central Coast now, is where you're based? Central Coast, yeah, been here for, for a while now. Yep. Um, yeah, I moved to Sydney for about three years and um, had my fill of Sydney in yeah. three years, so I decided <laughs> to end up back in Newcastle and travel. I travelled between Newcastle and Sydney for about five years yep. to, uh, to work. And then settled on the Central Coast. I don't think and, I'd last uh, three years in Sydney. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's not for me, yeah. I don't think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's a great place to go visit and have a good time, but I don't yeah. know if I really need to live there. So, <laughs> um, and Central Coast is good. You can get there really quick. And I've got family in Newcastle still and up um, yeah. Cessnock, uh, uh, Maitland Way. So, yep. um, so yeah, yeah, yeah cool. Central Coast is good. Yeah, nice. Enjoy. <laughs> Lots of waterways. Into your uh, musical background a little bit. What's the sort of music you were raised on? What's the music that brings back you being a kid and sort of first starting to notice, you know, music? Uh, and... 
music. So I'm I'm the older brother. <laughs> yep. Okay, so I didn't have any older brothers to sort of um, pass vinyl down to and things like that. Yeah, had to find your own so, way. So it was mainly through school. I remember a lot through high school. It was a lot of the popular stuff. This is through 70s, late 70s. And we listened to popular music, what was on the radio. Yeah, yeah. And I remember sitting in the lounge, in, in the bedroom with the cassette recorder, recording songs as they came on the radio, just so I had my little mixtape. So I did, I did that. But I remember in, like, fifth form, and I started listening, and it was to The Cure, yep. Radio Birdman, and Velvet Underground. For whatever reason, those three <laughs> bands that That's year, the I grabbed three albums and just listened to that. Yep. And so I, I suppose, was listening to something different to what my friends around me, and they were. They were listening to very different sort of music. So I so went to a lot of you know, live music, yep. went to the Cambridge a lot. Yeah, yeah did that so saw a lot of yeah, oh, yeah um, family hotel which was what ducks what's it called now ducks yeah, nuts yeah the family hotel now it was the ducks nuts yeah yeah well it used to be called the family yeah yeah then, back that's in, the, right. in the 80s yeah now they've called it the family again oh good yeah there you go yeah it was the and, ducks nuts yeah it was the ducks nuts when i came through but yeah. um yeah. So it's always been good. Always a lot of music in Newcastle. So yeah, it's just been good. What was your first interest? Music or photography? I guess you're better known as a photographer. Was your first drawn to photography before music? Or um, well, I always used my father's camera. Yep. So he always had uh, a nice camera. As I turned out, as it turned out to be, I didn't know at the time really. So, but it was a Pentax ME Super. So it was nice, and he had a nice fast fifty mil lens. Yep. So. And, and I played with that, and I've got photos from playing with that when I was 12 and 13, which, you know, it's, it's still in a shoebox somewhere. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I was interested in seeing what a camera could do, mm-hmm. I suppose. But um, as for actually trying to shoot something specific, um, once I started going to see live music, because I shot live music, um, from like year 12 for the next five years or yeah, so, yeah. four years. Yep. So, and that was just sneaking a camera in. Yeah, yeah. That's what that <laughs> was. Just walk. Well, I used to show, I remember I used to show the camera to the security guy at the front door. Yep. So, and I just said, is it all right if I can take this in? And I'd have the camera and a 50 mil lens and a zoom. Yeah, yeah. And I'd just walk it in and I'd shoot from the crowd and I shot a lot of people, a lot, mostly Australian stuff coming through Newcastle. Yep. So, um, so... I had a big interest in that at that time. Yeah. So was there any plan at that point? Was there any plan at that point to um, get involved in the journal? You know, getting it off to magazines to have it published, or was just truth? Tell you the truth, not at all. No, I I don't have any any memory of thinking about it more than just taking my camera to a show to sort of see what images I could get from that show. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't think. Of the next step forward as to who, okay, who actually wants these images? Yeah, yeah. Who do I approach <laughs> with these images? So, so you know, in the late eighties, when my life changed and it sort of became very family orientated, it was sort of an easy thing to just put aside. Yep. To, so I didn't really think anything of it at the time. So yeah, and yeah. Then, yeah, that's fine. That's <laughs> fine. Yeah. Who are your favourite musical photographers? Um, who, who are the big names for you that sort of, I guess, personify what you'd like to, I don't know, get, get along the lines uh, of? Or? Well, a lot of the stuff, a lot of people I look look at for who are doing good things now uh, are people who are currently shooting now. Yep. Like, there's lots of great photographers from decades ago and things like that. And yeah, that's yeah. all well and warranted. But you got, you know, got um, Pete Dobgan. Mm-hmm. Um, Ian Laidlaw, yep. um, Josh Groom. Mm-hmm. You know, these guys are, are producing good content constantly. Yeah. So, um, and it's just nice to, I don't know, it's just nice. These guys have been doing it for 10 years and, and, is, and, and to see their progression and that they're actually getting an income and getting a, a sort of a career or a sort of a um, work yeah. out of what they're doing so yeah. 
So it's good to see. Yeah, it, it is possible as a photographer, as a working photographer, to make a living doing music photography as a specialty, is it? Uh, or is not it? hundred percent. It's an uphill battle. I think you got, it's got to be part of something else. Yep. Um, or you do other things on the side solely. Yeah. As well, like whether it's weddings, a simple example, if you're a wedding photographer and that's yeah. where you, you got your income from, but, you know, in the evening you shot two gigs a week, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so you could do it like that and not worry about it that way. Yeah. Um, or you could do it like, um, you know, Ian Laidlaw, you know, he's getting work through press images and he works for Splendour in the Grass and yeah. other festivals and things like that. He's, he's out shooting with, um, who is it, bloody... Who is it? Celine Dion? She's out here at the oh, moment, yep. isn't she? Um, I, I haven't kept up with Celine's <laughs> to a <laughs> schedule. I'm pretty sure she is. I'm pretty sure. Well, he got picked up for her tour. Yep. Yeah, cool. So, yeah, and, and these are young guys who are um, doing good things. So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, if you can get into that area, but a lot of people are doing other things on the side as their income. Yeah, yeah. And, and so you don't go into it thinking you're going to make any money. <laughs> it's no, no more, uh, uh, I guess, rich than, than being a musician, uh, essentially, then. It, it's very similar. Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's very similar. You do it for, for very much a passion and what you get out of it um, yourself personally rather than it could make you some sort of financial gain. Yeah. So... So you do it like that. <laughs> Have you got any particular standout bands that, that always are photogenic and you're always guaranteed of a good shot? Is there anyone you really look forward to, to shooting? Oh, there's, there's people who will perform on stage. There's people who will, will deliver every time you see them. Yeah. And um, you know you're going to get a, a good image. Like I ran to, um, what was it, Wax's set and mm-hmm. splendor in the grass i think it was the second day or third day yep. and i ran to their set <laughs> just because i seen images i'd heard people talk about them and yep. they were an easy opportunity so and they did you know, it was great show uh great shoot yep. so um there's people like that you know hearts hearts will always put on a great show yep so so and um i've got the preachers tomorrow night down at um Terrigal, yeah so. nice how, how much they're, they're do you? Great. How much do you let your personal taste dictate who you're going to shoot, or are you, you you'll see <laughs> anything? Or hundred percent. Yep. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yep. Um, sometimes I'll I'll give in and um, <laughs> I'll see see people because I think it might be a good show. Like I sh- I went to Ed Sheeran, mm-hmm. and I'm not a fan of Ed Sheeran. I can appreciate his music yep. and appreciate what the guy can do in front of a crowd like that and you got you got to look back and go, wow, you know, yeah, yeah. it's pretty fantastic. Yeah. And the opportunity to photograph the guy, I had to go down and do. So yep. I went down with my partner and we fought the traffic um, and it took us hours <laughs> to get there. I can imagine, yeah. And it was a great shoot. It's just one of these things that is just bigger than life. Yeah. And the, the pit you could drive a semi-trailer through was <laughs> so wide. It was just... It was just so great to, to be a part of. Yeah. And then I went out and watched 45 minutes and went home and spent another two hours trying to get home. <laughs> so um, that was my night. It was like five hours of travel and an hour and a quarter of being at a show. Yeah. So <laughs> have you ever uh, done? It was worth doing, you know. Yeah. I can cross that one off my list. <laughs> have you ever been on the other side of the lens and been on stage as a performer in a band or anything like that? Not at all. No. Look, um, like I've got two younger brothers, and both of those play. Yep. Um, but I never played anything to the point where I could say I could play anything. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I've tried a number of times with the guitar. I've got a lovely guitar here at home with yep. a nice amp. It's just you know teasing me <laughs> in the lounge room, yep. saying "Come on." <laughs> and um, um, but no, I, I've never, I haven't got that side of things. Yeah, yeah. So, and that's fine. Yep. That's fine. There's lots to go out and see people who can do it really good. Yeah. So, so I, I, I'm no quite shorty. happy to do that. <laughs> so you do, you're the editor and owner of, of Reverb Street Press. Do you have other avenues outside of that that you would have your work published in at the moment? Is there is there a magazine industry for it still? Or is, it seems to have dried up a lot of the old music magazines or shift online. Is there still a, a, a market for rock what, photography? For, for print, you mean? Yeah. For print, it, it'd be tough. 
Yeah. It really is. It's like it needs to be more of an exclusive to be in print and it's more higher market yep. than print rather than um, tabloid and free press. That, that's just difficult. Yeah, yeah. To, to rely on um, the advertising um, to get you through yeah. um, it is too difficult. You've got to sort of cut it down to like a 1,000 print run or a 500 print run and charge $9 for, for whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Or, or, or sort of in that sort of way of doing things, I think. Yeah. Um, It'd be, it'd be very hard. Yeah. What do you? So, bit, yeah. <laughs> what do you sort of see as the you know street press? I, I remember writing for Street Press when I was back in uni in you know, the early two thousands and that sort of thing. When you, there was still there was the U Turn Street Press back then, and yeah. is, is there still a, a place for the physical street press? I know there's a couple that get around. There's Newcastle Mirage, and you still get some of the larger Sydney ones. But how much of that is still? Just well, resisting that, I guess, the the inevitable shift online. Well, Newcastle Mirage is a different thing than, than what River sort of ever was. And I think they've got their, their market and they're a lot better chance of um, going well yep. or well enough than a, a straight-up street press, I think, um, can ever be. Um, there's just too much cost. Yeah. Um, just just printing the damn thing was just so expensive to expect. <laughs> um, the advertising to keep up with what how much the the print runs were was yeah, it was tough. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> but, um, so. what 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 do you you uh, write as well as photo, uh, photo, photograph or um, primary, primarily an editor or I try to yeah. look if I go to a show and you know. You, you know how it is. You've been to shows. You can yeah. go to a show and you can write and you can get a plus one. Yeah. So I go. I can take my partner and I can photograph. And a lot of the big shows in Sydney, you, you photograph that. You're in and out in fifteen minutes. You know. Yeah. You do the first three songs and, and you, because yeah. your your job's done. Yeah. Out you go. So I, I don't mind putting my hand up and I'll write right enough to to warrant to be there yeah. and I'll sit and we'll go see go see the show, especially if it's in Sydney. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, if I'm gonna travel an hour and a half or something to get to something like that, I want to spend more than twenty minutes there. Yeah, that's right. With so, um You've done the radio as well. Is that was that just you wanted to get some local bands heard, or you have a radio background? How did that sort of come oh, about? Not there? at all. It was, um, I suppose it was they were running a course in just broadcasting for whatever reason. I'd found out. Yep. Might have known someone or who had been there, and they were running this course, and it was something that I I thought I wouldn't mind doing just to. Um, get over, I suppose, a perceived fear of public speaking yep. or broadcast. To sit there, even though there's no one in front of you in a, in a radio station, Yeah, you, you, it, it can spook you. Yeah. And I still get I that at home here. Just you know, I sit in front of the microphone at home sometimes, and it, <laughs> I'm just recording intros and stuff, and it's like, well, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah that's, that's that's right. So I thought, oh, it ran for six weeks, cost a couple hundred dollars. I thought it'd be something fun to do. Yep. And it just came from that. I, I did that and found that I was quite comfortable in doing that. It, yeah. I didn't didn't bother me one bit. So I did that, and I thought, well what ideas they ask for ideas yep. of what shows and i put about five to them and four of them were just sort of standard shows and the fifth one was um a show where we bring in local artists and do some live sets yep do a live set in in, in the studio and a bit of a chat yeah yeah and they went for that which surprised me, <laughs> really, the very quite a conservative community radio station, and they went for that. So um, I ran with that for a number of years. Yep. So I had a lot of people, yeah, had a lot of bands. Yeah, yeah. It was quite easy to get them in there. All you got to do is put your hand up and go, hey, do you want to come <laughs> into the radio station for now and have a chat with me? Yep. And they, you know, bands had come in. I met a lot of people. Um yeah, a lot of fun. Yeah. Very run by the seat of your pants stuff. Just plug stuff straight into the back <laughs> of the mixing desk. Yeah. And start <laughs> and headphones on and try to get a mix yeah. and off you go. <laughs> cool. So, so um, yeah, with all those endeavours under your belt, is, is photography and reverb 
full time gig for you, or you do other things as well? Well, the... at the moment, right? At the moment, I suppose you could call myself. I suppose you'd call myself retired. Yep. I suppose yeah, yeah. I don't actually work or earn an income as such. Yep. So I've had my twenty year IT career. I did all that. Um, then when I bought the paper, that was about ten years ago. Yeah. I've done that. Lost. Well, if I hadn't have, <laughs> if I hadn't have bought the paper and stayed in IT, my financial position would be a hell of a lot better than it is now. Yeah. But I've had. You know, I didn't do that. I did 10 years in Reverb, and, um, yeah. What was the draw to quite, Reverb? What was the what, what was the draw for you to, to make that purchase? Uh, and take on Reverb? It, it, was, it was sort of one of those what-if situations yep. where I, I could see myself, if I didn't do it, I'd, I'd just look <laughs> back at it and go, yeah, I, I wonder what it. would have happened if yeah, I'd yeah. done that, yep. you know? And IT had already burnt me out. I'd, I'd had a gut full of that at the time. So um, so it was just one of those. And it was financially to buy it. It was a, quite a, a no-brainer, really, yeah, yeah. to do that. Um, so that, that was really the reason why I, I put my hand up and purchased. Yeah, yeah. How? What was your sort of initial aim with it? I mean, it's – you have – I mean – what are the ongoing goals with it? It's going to continue just indefinitely as long as you can maintain uh, people's yeah. interest, yeah? Look, look, it's online at the moment. It's been like that for five years, I think it is. Yep. Um, and it, it, it just does what it is. Yeah. yeah. I, I learned very quickly that um, if you're going to get some any sort of income or some sort of income out of an online you know, website like that, yep. you need a lot of traffic, and a lot of people working for no money yeah, yeah. to do it. Yep. So I can put my hand up and say, right, I can do it full time. Let's see what I can get out of it. And from what I could see, that would not be enough. Yeah, so yeah. I'd be asking other people to work for nothing to try to get me an income. Yep. And you, I can't, you, know, you don't do that. So, <laughs> um, uh, so I was quite happy. It was, you know, it's just worked out where. It is what it is. Yep. It gives an outlet for the industry to, you know, get their press releases out yep. and use the way they wish to use it. It gets in um, writers and photographers, they can use it the way they want to use it. Yep. So, and for myself, I get to go and see shows I wouldn't normally, oh, I could never afford to see shows. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, this. <laughs> I, I can say I've been to. A, shake me head. Yeah, I've, I've been to plenty of shows that I wouldn't have been able to <laughs> go to unless I was doing no, a review it's for. Like that, I, I haven't got that sort of fun, so I, yeah. I feel very lucky in a, you know, to to have that opportunity. So yeah, it, so it almost is a payment in itself. Kicker. It almost really is a payment in itself. The fact that you get to go and do this stuff for no cost well, to yourself. Well, it's it's. Yeah, not many people really do it. You know, you, you, you look at the photographers who go and shoot a shoot a tour. Say yeah. they come in and our band comes in and they do five shows around Australia. Yep. And in those pits, you might get ten in every show. So each one of those photographers, there's only fifty photographers in Australia for that <laughs> tour of that person who yep. only comes out here every five years. Yeah, yeah. you're one of fifty. Yeah. So it, it's a special thing to to be there anyway. So. And it's a thrill. Is it, it, <laughs> to be in, in amongst that and yeah. to be right uh, a metre away sometimes from people. And, yeah, yeah. That's great to shoot like that. What's the etiquette like with photography, with photographers down in that space? I've only ever been to the gigs in, in the in the pit there and you see the photographers up front, they're clambering yeah. for the best shots. Everyone's generally pretty nice, are they? Is it Really good. Yeah. yeah, you have no dramas. Everyone knows how to move around and not get in anyone's way and, you know, and if anyone does, then, yeah, it's, if someone's in front of me, and I suppose I, I, I do this, where if someone's in front of me and they put their hands up, I mean, some people will hold the camera up if they're closer to the stage just to get over the stage lip yep. so they can get more of the artist in their, in their frame. Yeah. And that's all fine, but just don't do it in front of me. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> especially when there's someone who I'm, and all of a sudden in my frame becomes another yeah, camera. Yeah. So, you know, I'm quite happy to tell that person at that point. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a tap on the shoulder. Yeah, yeah. It's like, keep it down. 
<laughs> that's fine. That's about that's all I've ever seen happen in a pit. Yeah. yeah. So, and it's it's all good. We all sort of know each other, so because a lot of people have been doing it for years. Yep. So we all sort of know each other, even if we we you know just bump into each other twice a year or three times <laughs> a year. At blues, blues, falls, and splendor. Yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> Do you so, see many new faces? Is there many new young photographers coming through that are? There, there always is. Yep. There's always there was always new people. Yeah, yeah. And um, there'll always be. You know, say it's Splendor. If I look at Splendor, that was my first time up there, so it's it's and it's Byron and and Brisbane. So you get a, a number of photographers who are purely that area based. Yep. So they might be regulars up there. Yeah, yeah. But um, you would say that there's about a third that have been there for a while. Yep. A third that's been there for about three years. Yep. And a third new people. Yep. Maybe. But, <laughs> yeah, no, it's good to see people sort of um, in there for a while yeah. doing it, especially when they're good photographers too. Yeah, most, right. <laughs> most people in there have to know what they're doing anyway. Yeah. Do you find, is there a shift with, uh, I guess, socially, um, Blues Fest recently had someone call them out in terms of not having females in the lineup and blah, blah, blah. Are you seeing a changing dem- demographic with photography at all? Because I always, it's, you know, 99% blokes that are in that space between the, the stage and the, the barrier. Is, is that still the oh, case? Look, if, I, if I just take, say, Splendour, I would say there would be about um, a third female. Yep. I'd say something like that. Yeah. Um, and that's probably about right. If I, um, like I'd say yours and ours, it'd be about that, right? Yeah, yeah. That too. So I wouldn't say it'd be 50-50, but yep. um, yeah, we're an equal opportunity environment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, look, and, and, and it's, a, it's a nice place to be, even though it uh, can be quite rough. I've had a, a muddy boot into the back of the head get thrown through a pit <laughs> Yep. Sound wave or wherever it was. <laughs> so, but it's great. It's a lot of fun. The um the bio you shot through it seemed like there you'd, you'd shot in Newcastle live bands and then sort of went away to Sydney and then started shooting again. What was the were you shooting at all in that period when you're in Sydney? Was there a it seemed to be the digital camera that brought you back to photography? Yeah. Was it just that random purchase of getting a camera again and getting up with the latest it was, technology? Yeah, it was. I, I'd still uh, all the way through that time, like um, the two thousands and things like that. Uh, I still had my film camera, and every now and yep. again I'd shoot, and it'd just be the kids, and it'd be family, and be holidays, and yeah, yeah. that sort of stuff. I'd be shooting. And then from, say, mid-2000s, I realised I was just not picking that camera up. Yeah. And I only really went to buy a digital camera was because I – just to keep shooting. Yeah. It's something. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and then yeah, I went to a gig and I took the camera with me to a gig and I enjoyed it. So, yeah. Um, and that was about 2005, I suppose. Do you have a preference so, for digital or, or analogue, uh, you know, photography? Oh, uh, look oh. – Obviously, there's the drawbacks truth. and advantages to both. and uh, There's a hell of a lot more advantages to digital, <laughs> to tell you the truth. Yeah. Um, from, from my experience of film shooting back then, um, I really didn't know much about how cameras and settings and exposures yeah, yeah. and everything worked properly, yep. especially in low light. Yep. Shooting gigs, it was more luck than than management <laughs> uh, back then. Yeah. So no, I enjoy the digital camera. Um, you get a lot of, you know, you can go out and spend twelve hundred dollars on a camera, and it's a powerful thing. Yeah. What yeah. it can do, it, it's pretty impressive stuff. So, um, yeah. So why not take it into a photo pit? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. How's how's the scene at the coast, at the central coast? There is there a scene for original bands or? Oh, for sure. Yep. For sure. Yeah, you, know, you hear the same names. Yep. Coming uh, come around. Um, sea Gypsies. Yeah. You know, they, they play um, quite regularly here on the coast. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think they're playing Bado Bay in about a week's time. But you know they're they're getting um, quite a following. Yep. Um, there's bands like Ivy. I enjoy their music and they're they they played two years in a row up at Blues Fest. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's good, and there's venues now like Long Jetty Hotel and um, the Beery down at Terrigal. Yep. Um, it's good to see, you know, have places for people to um, to stop by on a tour. Yeah. 
do you, has it improved the scene since you've been living in the coast or is it sort of hold steady? There's always been something there or it's... Um, I would say the last five years it's probably improved yep. um, for original, original live artists. Yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. Definitely. So, um, and it's nice. Long Jetty Hotel is a five minute walk from my place. It's yeah. just so good. We've got <laughs> mammals there in about two weeks' time. Yeah, nice. And it's just, it's just great. <laughs> so, um, sorry, I just got my phone's just going stupid here. Um, do you do you get much uh, exposure to Newcastle scene at all, or do you get in town very um, often? Or? Oh, I'd probably have to say not much. Yeah, yeah. Anything that comes through press releases, like if it comes through as a press release, then I'll I'll, I'll grab it that way. Yeah. But going out and seeing music in Newcastle, I haven't done that for for a while. Yeah. Especially yeah. if it wasn't a show, say a bigger <laughs> show, which say um, at the Entertainment Centre or the the Workers Club in town. Yep. Um, whatever that place is now called. What is that called? Uh, Newcastle Workers. Yeah, it's called then. Panthers, Panthers and, and, uh, and, and Next next or something I see written on the wall there now. They've re- just renovated it. It's, it's, oh, Next. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that like the Coffs Harbour one? Like the one Could be. It's been a while since I've been to Coffs. Sex but Club. Yeah, it's all – I have only seen it from the outside. Last uh, last gig I went to there was David Duchovny. And I only went to really watch Fox oh, okay. Milder and uh, That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, that's you know it is what it is. I, I wouldn't go if I only ever go there for bands. I'm not going there to <laughs> hang out well, anytime soon at the Leagues Club. It, it's a bit like that. Yeah. Um. You know, and yeah, I know it's only an hour up the road and everything like that. So, <laughs> so I, I should be up there more often. But you know, uh, you know I get to see a show every fortnight, so I consider myself lucky. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, how much of your weekend is spent at gigs, or how much of your week is spent out <laughs> doing music? Oh, look, probably every second weekend we've got something to go to. Yep. Um, and, you know, I consider ourselves very lucky to be able to do that in, in the situation. Like, I'm, I'm able to, to to work from home. I look after my partner's um, 13-year-old boy yep. and the house. So yep. I'm basically the house husband. Yeah, cool. <laughs> and I get to stay home, do reverb, keep that rolling. Yep. And... Um, it's uh, we have the opportunity to go away and do Blues Fest and Splendor and yeah, yeah. Uh, yours and ours, and we'd probably go away six times a year to a festival. Yeah. So, and then catch what we can in between. If so, uh, if, if someone's so it, if someone's putting the money on for tickets out of all those festivals, what's the the festival that you'd recommend someone to go to? Sorry about that. I just had an alarm go off. No, you're right, mate. That's all Sorry, good. what was what was that? If if, if, so, if someone doesn't have the uh, the access, the review access, or the photography access, and they're laying out the money for the tickets, what's the festival to see out of all the, you know, the Blues Fest, Splendor? Oh, what's what's okay. the festival? Um, well, Splendor in the Grass. That was my first um, time there, so it was one of those ones that I've done others, and I needed to get to that one. Yep. And um, f- for a cruisy, older, laid-back festival, Blues Fest is just too good. Yep. That's really good. Uh, Splendor is more youth-orientated and um, and really nice. Like, yep. uh, we got caught with the cold yeah. and we got told it was um, an actual really good, you know, weekend for weather <laughs> there and it was fucking freezing on the same day. <laughs> It was just horrendously bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, and I've heard, yeah, you know, it gets wet and everything, but we're talking about doing Splendour again. We want to do Falls. Um, yours and ours. Love yours and ours. Yep. Um, um, my, my, my mum, what is it there? Groove in the Moo. Yeah, yep. I've done half a dozen of those. Yeah. Um, very young crowd. What yeah, can yeah. I say? <laughs> really young crowd. Yeah. Um, and it's the same each year, but a bit. Great artists on it, so it's always a great day. Yeah, yeah. So, so we get out. We get that's. Oh, I provide the social part of my our, our relationship, <laughs> basically. Yeah, nice. <laughs> it's, it's a nice, nice way to carry that one, I'd say. <laughs> oh yeah, well, it's a good way of doing it. Yeah. You know? What else are we going to do with our time? That's, that's, it, that's the way we look at it. So. <laughs> How long do you think you'll keep shooting for? How long are you going to be an active photographer? Um, as long as I can physically do it. Yep. Um, 
look, you know, Bob King is he's still shooting in the pit and he's got ten years on me <laughs> at least. Yeah. Um, so it's great to see Bob still in there doing it. Um, and um, you know, I'm quite capable. And, <laughs> to, and one of the big day outs, one of the last big day outs, what was yep. it? I can't remember what year it was. It was the hottest Sydney day on freaking record. Yeah, yeah. And we managed to get through that day. And I know that was like four years ago, but <laughs> yeah. No, I said I said years ago. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't mind just you know, I'll just retire to the photo pit. That's yeah, my aim. Yeah. So I'm I'm basically You've retired started. to the photo pit. Yeah. And I'll do this for another decade or so or <laughs> however long I can do it. Yep. So that's the aim. Yeah, nice. And if, if reverb sort of comes to an end, you'll still keep shooting and look for avenues for it to get published and all that sort of stuff? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see why not, you know. Um, it's, it would just be a different sort of thing. One of the luxuries of reverb is that, you know, I can put my hand up to shoot whatever <laughs> show yeah, yeah. I feel like putting my hand up for. So that's that's a great position to be in. Yeah. And I'm sorry to all the other photographers <laughs> listening about... <laughs> Me taking, you know, splendor shows or whatever show, but you know, you know, there's not much of a kicker except for that yeah. in, in what I'm doing. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I'm quite happy just to continue to just do that. Yeah, awesome. All right, man. That's pretty much it. I think that's that covers off everything. Awesome. I had questions there, so.